Well, I think it's um, the perfect day. It's um, snowing and cold here in Ottawa. And um, our guest is uh, lucky to be in sunny Florida. And today um, I have the pleasure of introducing Mr. Dennis Bork, who is a graduate of McGill University in physics and meteorology. He worked for 35 years at Canada's Federal Weather Service. He had a particularly strong interest in innovative application of atmospheric science to create practical to tools supporting health. So that's where I'm bringing him in is to talk about health uh, in regards to weather. And Denis not only worked for Mr. Bork, I should say, I do know him personally, so I might go back and forth. Um, he has co-authored several studies in the area of health and uh, climate. So Denis, I know uh, when it comes to health and climate, um, you first wanna give a disclaimer and I'll let you do that. Yeah, um, over the years we've did, figured out that uh, we make, wanna make sure that people understand that the, inf the information that I'll be providing during this interview is for educational purposes only and should not substitute for professional medical advice a, please consult your own medical professional or healthcare provider if you're going to seek medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment in, in anything that I mentioned. Great. Thank you. Yes, that's always a good reminder. I'm a meteorologist. I'm not a medical professional. <laughs> Although on this topic, you probably know more than most medical professionals, which is why I've asked you to be here today. So thank you very much. And I know when I asked you if we, you would talk on this sub subject, for you, you don't consider it weather and your health. You use the term medical meteorology. So could you explain exactly what you mean by that? Yes. Um, well, most people understand that um, some of the days you might not feel well. You might uh, be suffering because of dampness or uh, migraines and you figure it's the weather. And so all of this is weather and health, but when you get boiled down to it, some of the times it's more specific and medical meteorology is that branch, you might say, of trying to use meteorology to help the medical practitioners and any medical conditions to actually use meteorology to do that, not just to be sitting back and listening to people telling you anecdotes about um, aches and pains that show up on certain days. How about turning it around and using meteorology and help you manage your conditions? Do you know if medical meteorology or understanding health and weather is part of the medical curriculum? No, it's not part of the medical curriculum. And that's one of the problems that we, um, I say we, there are uh, meteorologists, biometeorologists who are, um, research in this field. And uh, it's one of the, the problems that exists is that the medical profession, particularly in the Western uh, world, uh, does not do any research or work or training in uh, this, let's call it medical meteorology, uh, this branch or this area. Um, they get very little training, if any at all. Um, so you are obviously aware of this. And so at some point in your career, you became very interested in this topic. And so do you delving into it a little bit more as to how and why you got? It's, it's, it's quite simple. Um, back in the early 80s, after a, about 10 years in meteorology, um, my GP, a general practitioner, uh, called me in or had me, we were chatting, and, uh, and he asked whether I had ever experienced relationship between weather and, and health. Uh, had I seen any research on the topic or not? And because in his opinion, people were showing up in his office in clusters. Certain days he'd see more people with certain complaints and other days people with other complaints. And it got me curious. And uh, I hadn't experienced any of that. And, and I started looking into the literature and lo and behold, I found uh, at that point, 20 to 30 years worth of literature, published studies that already existed um, compared to the number of studies that existed on health issues in general, this is a very, very small fraction, but they were there nonetheless. And from then on, I just kept digging and finding more and more and, and accumulating um, basically a literature database. 
then I have to ask you, what were the health conditions that you found were correlated to weather conditions? Well, the, the list can get quite lengthy, in fact. Um, the, uh, you'll find things like, um, obviously, I say obviously, because most people have heard about this, migraines and, and weather, uh, arthritis and weather, but you've got asthma. Uh, you'll have things like um, the, uh, appendicitis. Um, uh, you'll get uh, strokes associated with weather, um, um, heart attacks occurring more frequently in certain types of weather. Uh, and I'm not talking about people shoveling snow here. We're talking about uh, certain parts of weather systems, um, bronchitis, um, migraines I've mentioned, but um, health, uh, what do you call it, uh, mental health uh, issues as well. And this is just a short list. Uh, rheumatism, schizophrenia, um, all of these, there have been studies that have identified some linkages between day-to-day -day weather, the changes that are happening in the weather, and the worsening, and sometimes the improvement in the conditions. It's not just always worse when these conditions occur. Yeah, I guess when the, if the weather front or pattern that came in that made it worse goes away, then things improve. In a, in a manner of speaking, that's correct. Yes, you can uh, start with um, uh, your, your condition is is not great today, uh, or most of the time, you might say you're going to stay, and it will improve, and then go back to its what you might call it has a a, a base level, and it won't get that base level. You you'll get an improvement. And then you go back to the base level. It's not that you got worse and then you go back to your base level. It, you might be at your base level and you get better and then go back to your base level. So would you mind being more specific as to who's affected and to what degree? Yes. Um, there's about, it's been documented about 30% of the population is weather sensitive. And this is the, with the situation you have to be aware of. 30% is weather sensitive to the point that it affects quality of life. Now that can be very serious quality of life impact. Uh, uh, somebody with arthritis um, and um, it gets damp. And I'll use that very generally. That's why I want to make sure people understand what's dampness. Well, to a lot of people, when it gets very damp, their arthritis gets a lot worse. But it's not just dampness. There are other meteorological conditions where this could happen. But so you can have your arthritis getting worse. Um, you can have um, the uh, people with migraines. Um, so these people are weather sensitive uh, and they know it. They, they know it, I should say, they feel it and it impacts their life. There's another 30% of the population that are weather sensitive, but it doesn't impact their life. It, it's such a way that they don't understand, well, since it doesn't impact their life, they don't realize it until somebody mentions, well, didn't you um, have a headache uh, every time this happens? Is it, you know, when you mention it, maybe I do. Um, but it, it's immaterial because they don't, they don't do anything about it and it doesn't really mean too much. And the other third of the population is not at all weather sensitive at all. Um, it is, studies have shown that um, in the weather sensitive people, um, a greater proportion of them are women than men. Um, the reasons why is unknown. Um, the number of studies that have looked into this is uh, are very few. So uh, even that is a statement that carries a caveat, you might say, with it, because um, you need to do a lot of in-depth work to get beyond that. But that's generally the number of people that get... Uh, and and this is generally we're talking about here people like in in Canada and the U.S. Uh, Europe. I don't know if this applies, for example, in Africa or in the Latin American countries, which is completely different climate. So you you know with COVID, doctors have um, been more stressed. You know, and and certainly under the Canadian system, it's stressed. The U.K. system is stressed. You know, everywhere we look the medical system is stressed. And so I don't know that it's realistic at this time, you know, when you talked about your doctor 20 years ago, 
mentioning weather and your health. But today, I don't, I've never heard of a client tell me, oh, yes, my doctor had this discussion with me. So other than the point of stress and time limitations, do you have any comments to make as to either why it's not being integrated, um, other than we talked about earlier, the education, or, you know, maybe the importance of of how it sh could be reintegrated? Uh, it's, sure, there's no problem there. Uh, and by the way, it was 40 years ago already when, when I so, got it. Yeah. <laughs> So um, it shows my age. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not blaming the doctors at all for this. Um, there is a very little education uh, in the medical training. Um, and that's simply because it is not part of the uh, medical model, uh, you put it that way. And uh, you can't blame the doctors. You can't blame the medical model. It has been in place since uh, this current I'll call it the medical model of, of uh, practicing uh, medicine in, in uh, the Western world since at least the 30s, uh, the 1930s. Um, and that's where the doctors, their, their objective is to find the problem and, and help the patient cure it or get past it. Um, whether, uh, the fact that weather can be a contributing factor to the worsening of a condition is not something that the doctor can deal with after the fact. He's got to deal with, with the condition. So I'm not blaming the doctors. And even if we were to introduce this into the medical training now, it would take, oh, you know, at least a decade if we were able to jump right in. It would take at least a decade, if not two decades, because before it would become part of something that the doctors would discuss with their patients. Unless you have a doctor that is particularly interested in this, uh, such as my GP at the time, and uh, and he remained interested afterwards as well. Um, yeah, so I was thinking, as you're talking, the one thing, I guess, individuals, because if we can't expect it to come from the doctors, but individuals, if they're given a prescription, they're given that prescription when they know they're in a flare-up due to weather conditions, but they well, then correct. modify or to talk to their pharmacist about modifying. The Correct. But I, I wouldn't want a, a, a patient to jump and start doing this, you know, self-adjusting, self self-medicating um, without discussing with their, with their medical uh, professional. And for that, the, the first step they should be doing is it, doing a, taking a log, you know, for logging their condition over a period of time um, determining that they are weather sensitive, that their condition is is the result, or that the state of their condition can be related to to the weather, and yes, um, then talking to their doctors, and if their doctor says, "Well, that's okay, why don't you give it a try?" Then come up with a plan with your medic with your doctor. Don't go and do it on yourself on your own. Um, weather is very complex. It's not just the temperature and the humidity. Um, I should mention, most people think that it's temperature, humidity, uh, wind speed, direction, and maybe atmospheric pressure that are the, the issues, uh, that, because those are the medical, the meteorological things that most people are aware of. Um, and so everybody's trying to relate it to that, including all the studies that, that were done. Most, most of the studies are trying to relate it to just those five parameters. And where there seems to have been success in my experience and looking at the literature is where people have gone into some meteorological parameters that no one on this uh, interview would ever have heard the terms, but there are computed calculations that are done in the meteorological uh, forecasting world. Um, and th those conditions such as how fast is a front approaching? How fast is a front moving away? As, and if it's moving faster, then those condition is is worse. You might think along the lines of um, if um, you uh, are in a cellar and pitch black and your eyes have adjusted to the, there's no light and then you open up the window and it's bright, bright sunlight, your eyes have to adjust very quickly and you might actually get a headache or eye strain or just through that adjustment. Um, well, this can be the same when you've got a, a weather front going through. Um, your um, your heart 
might have to adjust to the change. One of the things I, I could mention is one of the a few of the studies have looked at the um, uh, the blood characteristics, and for example, the viscosity of the blood. I forget what the term is, the meteorological term. The, sorry, the medical term for that is, but the viscosity of the blood changes depending on the condition uh, of in the atmosphere. And we're talking about somebody stepping outside, for example, if you step outside and the temperature changes by uh, 20 degrees, which is not unusual up in Ottawa, which for the listeners know I'm on holidays in Florida, I don't live down here. I come from Ottawa, Canada. So when you step outside, you see this drop in temperature within 30, 30 seconds, your blood viscosity will have changed. Makes it strain, it, added, it adds strain, at least the theory is that that would add strain to the heart. And if you are, um, if you suffer from angina, for example, you may then get an angina attack. I'm not telling people to worry about this. I'm saying this is the type of theory that is in the medical, in the biometeorological world, people are trying to determine. But a lot more research needs to be done to figure that out exactly. Okay. So, you know, if I was weather, weather sensitive, then I would want to you know, go, you know, Denis, how do I, you know, get a way to monitor myself? And I know years ago, you did develop an app that unfortunately, you're not no longer involved in. But is there anything that's currently in existence that we can go, I'm going to check out this on this channel, or a certain country has something that might not help them if they're in Canada, but maybe if they're traveling? Um, is, do you know of something that's out there to help people? Make Actually, choices? yeah. Yes. Um, I became fascinated in the early 2000s when I found out that Germany, the German Weather Service, working with the German Health Service, started predicting health conditions on their weather forecasts. And they have on their website, now it's in German, but if you have the right, the right apps, you can uh, get the, the English equivalent. Uh, they call what they call their bio-weather uh, it's the it's the German Weather Service. So it's Deutsche Wetterdienst uh, de with dwd de is the website, um, and it's the bio weather. And there they actually forecast um, with maps over the next two days. Um, at least four conditions: arthritis, heart con con concerns. Um, general well-being and rheumatism, um, I think, are the four. Uh, and you can actually, they, they actually put out a forecast. So on their website, you can go look at the weather forecast, and tomorrow is going to be sunny and uh, partly cloudy with rain and possibly snow, the typical four or five parameters all on the same day. Um, but if you go to the link, they've divided their country, well, for each of their counties, I'll call them counties, um, they have a specific forecast of these weather con these health conditions, the health condition, not uh, like we have in Canada that there is a um, uh, a heat alert. We put out Canada will put out a heat alert, and that's fine. That's another way in which weather health affects health because uh, you can get a sunstroke, you can get uh, um, what do you call it overheated, you can get uh, sunburn, obviously. Um, we put a Canada puts out heat alerts, but we put out the heat alert. We don't put out a sunstroke alert. We don't put out the equivalent of what would be some of the conditions that the hot weather would generate. Yeah. So, and so um, I have a lot of listeners in the U.S. Do you know of the the yeah. U.S. Th there have been various people attempting this. Um, most of the over the last forty years. Um, there's nothing in, from the government agencies. A um, couple of the um, private uh, people, uh, such as um, AccuWeather and uh, such, uh, it's the only one that comes to mind right now, the Weather Channel is another one, uh, Weather Underground, they will have forecasts of uh, pollen counts. Um, uh, what, what are some of the other ones? Pollen, flu. Um, 
but it, they usually are reporting those and not, not what was the pollen count or what is the pollen count today, not forecasting what is going to be tomorrow. If you can get a forecast of what's going to be tomorrow, this is what Germany does, then you might be able to take action today to mitigate your condition. If you're weather sensitive and you've learned from experience that, you know, when I get this warning, I'm going to suffer. So maybe I can avoid doing a few of the other things that uh, will worsen my condition and manage better through it. And you mentioned like adapt, ad, 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 adapting your medications. So that's one of the areas, for example, that uh, is, is promoted in Germany. And that is that the, the, the general practitioners would advise their patients about when you see this in the forecast, then do this with the medication. But when you don't see it, don't bother doing this with the medication. Interesting. All right. Well, this is really helpful. And I'm sure everybody wish your app was still around so that they could, you know, have more of a pulse on their health conditions as it refers to weather. But your suggestion of logging and just starting to pay attention and maybe making notes in terms of weather patterns that they see will be as close as we get right now. But I yeah. want to thank you very, very much for taking the time to speak to everybody in regards to medical meteorology or weather in there. I really appreciate it, Denise. So uh, thank you. No problem at all. Anytime. Thanks. Bye-bye.